Well, hi, everybody. I thought we'd take a, a few minutes here to go over some print related features that we have in Lightroom 4 that are new. Okay, one of them's in the develop module, one of them's in the print module. Uh, it's soft proofing, and then there's a print brightness slider that's inside the print module. So let's take a look at each one of them. Um, soft proofing. I'm going to start out by telling you, I don't really use it. All right, I, I didn't, I was never a big proponent of getting soft proofing in Lightroom for me. However, I understand that a lot of people do want to soft proof, so I think it's good that it's there. All right, so let's take a look at how it works. It's inside the develop module, which is a little bit weird. All right, at first I thought it should be in the print module, but it kind of makes sense in the develop module. You're going to see why in a second here, uh, but it's mainly because when when we turn soft proofing on, and we're seeing colors that are out of gamut for whatever printer profile we've chosen, where's the place where you could make adjustments to that? It's in the develop module. So to have soft proofing in the print module would be kind of weird because then we'd have to come back to the develop module to do something with it. So I, I, I get it now. All right, so let's go ahead. We turn on soft proofing here. Uh, you're gonna see a couple of different things. Your, your image kind of changes. If you right click over here, you'll see we're viewing this on paper white and there's a couple of different options if you wanna change that. Then there's a soft proofing panel that shows up in the top right corner, okay? Basically, it's, it takes the place of your histogram these are like your highlight and shadow clipping warnings, but instead this one is your monitor out of gamut clipping or uh, call it clipping warning. You're out of gamut warning for your screen. And then this one is for your print. Okay. So if you wanted to check what colors were out of gamut for your screen, and I was going to change this to Adobe RGB, you'd see, you know, you might see some tiny blue specks that are down here, but as I, you know, you can barely see that stuff. So, but that shows you for your screen. This is the one that I think everybody's really most concerned with, which is your printer, uh, your printer proof. Okay. So how do we use this? First thing you do is, is come in here, turn this on. All right. The next thing you gotta do is choose a profile. All right. If you haven't downloaded the profiles for your printer and for your papers yet, you need to do that. When you come over here and you click on other, you should see for your printers, you should see a whole bunch of profiles listed in here. Okay. So I've chosen a couple here. I've chosen two. I've chosen Epson Premium Luster, which is kind of a glossy paper, and then a fine art paper. All right, so let's choose the Premium Luster profile first, see what happens. So uh, as I'm looking at the photo, and it's probably kind of difficult for you to see, so I'm just gonna toggle this on and off, but you'll see a couple of red specks. See around the cow up here? You'll see a couple of little red specks. That is your out of gamut warning for those colors. Nothing really to speak of. For, for what we have here. It's not even it's not even enough to worry about. Okay, just a tiny couple little specs here and there. However, let's say I change this to the fine art paper. Now because now you know, this isn't a glossy paper, it's not gonna it's not gonna reproduce the colors as well. Now we see a lot more of the gamut warning, this red area. Okay. So so that's that's our problem. That's alerting us to our problem. What do we do with it? Really, the main thing that you're probably going to do with this is you'd go down to the HSL panel, all right, go to saturation, and you can take your target adjustment tool and then just hold it over the colors that happen to be out of gamut and just click and drag down. You're going to see something happen here in a second. As soon as I let go of my cursor and ask me if I want to make a proof copy, I always create a proof copy because take a look at what it does down here. It creates a virtual copy. And it renames it based on the profile, which is which is pretty handy for you if you're going to soft proof. And what this does is this keeps your soft proof copy away from your main copy of the photo. Because I could go back to this image, all right, and and I don't want to make an adjustment to this because maybe I want to save it for the web one day. Well, I don't want to desaturate the colors. It was fine for the web. It's just for that specific printer profile and that specific paper, that's where I had the problem. So I'm making a global adjustment to the photo for a specific output issue that I have here. I don't want to make it on the main copy of the photo. So I keep this virtual copy over here and it does name it so that you'll know what that virtual copy is for. All right. And then again, you just click on these little areas and just drag downward. You can see over here, we got some of the greens that are out of gamut so I can click and drag down on them. And if you look at the sliders, it's decreasing the saturation for those colors and it's getting them more in gamut. So I, I think it's good that it's here for me. I don't personally use it because 
if the colors are out of gamut, the printer will usually take care of it for me. All right. And I'm okay with that. I, I don't need the control, but I do realize that some people do want the control. Either way, those colors are going down. It's whether you let the printer do it or whether you do it. For me, um, for me, it's kind of, I don't want to spend that much time on it. And the idea here is when I start to drag that down, like look at over here, these colors now became in gamut, but I'm going to continue and drag the saturation down. So now it's going to drag the saturation down more here as well as over here to get those back into gamut. So it's really, again, it's a personal preference. If you wanted soft proofing, you'll be very, very happy to know it is now here inside of Lightroom. And there's just a couple little tips and tricks on using it, especially the virtual copy. I think that one helps out a lot. All right, we'll click done. Let's go over to the print module. Let's take a look at the other print related thing that they have here. And that's all the way down at the bottom in the print job panel. And it's called print adjustment. All right. What this does is it solves a problem that I had quite a bit, and that is my photos would appear too dark when I print them. And that's because generally I'm looking them at them on a bright LCD screen, and I like my bright LCD screen, so I don't really want to change that. I use my screen for a lot of other things too. Um, I don't really want to change that. But when I printed, my prints came out too dark. Okay. What I used to have to do is go over to the develop module, hop over here, increase the brightness slider, come over to the print module and print. And, and that usually took care of it. And eventually I kind of had a sweet spot. Like I had these little presets and I had a sweet spot of, you know, I knew plus 20 uh, worked pretty well for me. But now they, they've just put that inside the print panel over here. So now I can turn on print adjustment. I can increase the brightness to whatever setting. And you might have to do some test prints at first. You might have to do a couple of test prints to hone in on what is the, the sweet spot for this. Maybe it's plus 15 for you. Maybe it's plus 30, whatever it is. But once you find it, generally, as long as your conditions really aren't changing here, you can pretty much leave it on there. And that's what I do. Once I turn it on, I don't turn it off anymore. It's on there. It stays at plus 25. And I know that it's automatically going to increase the brightness of my print by plus 25 when I print it. And that again, tends to be the sweet spot for me, but you might have to do a couple test prints. Either way, I like having it here because again, when I went over to the develop module to do it before Lightroom 4, I was making a brightness adjustment to the entire photo. Sometimes I would forget if I didn't make a copy of it and I'd save that for the web while it was too bright. Okay, because I was just making it for the print. This way, it just keeps it for the print. Okay, so it's not going to make it brighter in any other area of Lightroom. So when you save this out for the web, the photo will look just fine. Okay, so if you're doing a lot of printing from Lightroom, uh, definitely some new features that you'll want to check out inside of Lightroom 4. All right, well, folks, hope you enjoyed. My name is Matt Kluskowski, and I'll talk to you again soon.